In today's project, we're going to be working on 2009 Pontiac G8 GT. We're going to be doing a brake job. My buddy Ish from iRedroom E is going to help me remove the, uh, the pads as well as the rotor and uh, service them all together. In today's project, you will need a jack, two jack stands, torque wrench, impact driver, grease, brake cleaner, WD-40, shop towels, ratchets with some extensions, 12 millimeter socket, 18 millimeter socket, 18 millimeter wrench, a channel lock, hammer, a wire brush, and replacement brake pads with brake ro uh, with the rotors. So we started the project by uh, jacking up the uh, the car. We used the uh, jack to li uh, lift it from the uh, differential of the car, and we put uh, jacks uh, put jack stands under the car, and uh, we removed the rim. And now we're going to start off by uh, removing the uh, the brake pads uh, from the caliper. Uh, how do we um, how do we start? What's the first step? So we've got two sizes of bolts. One's the uh, 18 millimeter, and the other are 12 millimeters. And the 12 millimeter uh, bolts hold up the uh, the caliper onto the onto the knuckle. Uh, with the slider pins so as we remove if we're only changing the pads all we have to do do is uh, is remove the, the small screw in the back here with the uh, with the 12 mil and as you can see you hold the slider pin and then you remove it with the 12 mil we've already loosened it up so I'm just hand loosening the, uh, the screw as you can see it's just the 12 mil and they do use yellow Loctite of some sort on this but we're gonna use red afterwards. So all we do is uh, we open up the uh, the caliper halfway to get the to get the she's pads a, out. She use a wrench, eh? Yeah. So we just flip it up, and then you get the pads out from the sides. The old pads. They might be a little seized. Use a wrench. Pop them off, and there you have it. Those are the pads, and then you just put in your new pads, and you're good to go. If you're not changing your rotor and just changing your pads, it's time already, eh? The cups. Then, mm -hmm. how much is left on this? You'd say nothing. <laughs> we're uh, we're 125,000 kilometers on stock rotors and stock pads on this car. And it's seen a lot of burnouts and donuts and brake stands and all kinds of stuff. So they've they've lasted this long and they've done well, but it's time for a change. So now that we took out the brakes, uh, the next step is ish, please. So now uh, we have the we have the brake hose here. So we basically just just rotate this clip out of its socket and it becomes loose. And then we flip up the uh, the inner part of the caliper, slide it out on the slider pin. I'll put it aside for now. Luckily on these cars we have a nice little uh, suspension bracket that it could rest on but most of the time we have to hang it with a wire or a zip tie or something just to keep it elevated and get the pressure off the off the brake hose. Now that, now that that's, that's out of our way we have this knuckle that bolts up to the hub and it's bolted up by two 18 millimeter bolts and from the factory they've they've torqued it to yield and there's some Loctite on it so it's kind of it's kind of hard to get out but I've loosened it up already so all we got to do is, is take this bracket out so you can slide out the the rotor what size is that again it's an 18 millimeter bolt We have the knuckle that holds the calipers in place, uh, I mean the, uh, the rotors in place, with the two 18mm bolts. And we put this aside for the time being, and we'll work on the uh, work on removing the rotor. What is that? That that's is a, that's a rubber plug that you could remove to check your, your e-brake pads, to service your e-brake pads. That's a little... Uh, little access way so you could see what's going on in there instead of taking off the uh, the rotor all the time to have a look at that. That's pretty neat actually. It's like a window to, to check. A window, the, it's like yeah. an inspection window. So a good trick is to uh, to get some WD-40 or any type of lubricant that you might use and we just spray it a little bit behind the studs and the uh, and the rotor so it loosens up all the rust if there is any. We've been lucky enough to get as little rust as possible on these rotors 
So it might be easy, it might be hard. It's always a gamble when it comes to cars that are getting driven all year round. So we got a big hammer. And since this rotor is old and we're not going to use it again, we have a little window back here that we could hammer from. So we'll hammer, rotate, hammer, rotate until it's loose, and then we'll pop it off. As you can see, it's nice and loose now. You put your fingers in the rotor, pull it out gently without damaging the threads on the lugs. And there you have it, that's the old rotor. It's also good practice to have your, um, that's your right. lug nuts on there so when you're hitting it, it doesn't fly off. That's correct? correct. So when you have the old rotor back on there, when, before you're starting doing this, you just put two, two nuts on it. So when you're hammering it out, it doesn't smack you in the face or anything of that nature. And it's just a safe practice to do. So do as they say, not as we do. <laughs> so we have the, the pads out, the rotor is out. And now we're going to be doing a bit of a, a cleanup, a maintenance, if you will, and uh, put the uh, the new uh, rotors on and the new pads on. Okay. So uh, what's uh, what's the first step on uh, on cleaning up this? So the first thing that I usually do is I get some brake cleaner. I just spray it very liberally. Just get it nice and clean. All the rust, all the brake dust from over time. Just get it, soak it, just clean it up as much as you can. Um, dust pad, uh, dust shield. Quick note, if you're doing it in your garage, put some uh, cardboard underneath so um, it soaks up all the, uh, the brake fluid, leftover brake fluid that drips down. Mm -hmm. Over here we have the hub. And that's where the, uh, the, the lugs and everything is. There. There's also a bearing in there and that's, that's basically where your axle bolts up to your hub and your brakes and everything else. So over here, over time, behind the rotor, it gets a little cruddy and rusty. So it's, it's really good practice to get a wire brush or sandpaper or something and just, just go clean it up just get rid of all the all the chunks all the all the rust and then once it's all nice and clean just be careful not to damage your threads and, and your, and your, uh, your lug, lug threads and just get it nice and clean you can see the dust in the air already and uh, so it's, it's a good mating surface for the new rotor to sit in and next time you, you do your brakes you won't have such a hard time removing it but as you saw it's been good so far and just it's good insurance for future. It also uh, avoids uh, making noise and, and. That's correct. When you put the new rotor around, you won't have any that. voids in mm -hmm. the back or dirt that that might not help it to sit properly. So after that, after you clean up your uh, your rotor, just give it another wipe with the uh, with the brake cleaner. Make it nice and clean. Let it dry in time. So after cleaning it uh, with the with the brake cleaner, uh, we're gonna go right ahead and put uh, some uh, anti seize on certain areas of the uh, the hub. Is that correct? Yep. So we're gonna get some anti seize. You can get the copper ones or any different kind. It works. It just it just stops it from rusting and seizing up. So you get a little bit of anti seize and you just put it on the uh, on the hub itself. You never have enough anti seize on metal on metal surfaces. And you go a little bit around the hub. Just make sure you don't get too much on the treads because you don't want those loosening up on, on the highway. <laughs> just make sure your hands are clean and the surface is clean. Just rub it on with your finger, get it all over the place. So in the future, you don't have any seizing up. So this will help to uh, take out the uh, the That's rotor right. out That's easier, right? right? Without okay. okay. This is also good. Takes a bit of time, but I, I guess it's worth the uh, worth the effort, right? For sure. For sure. And now we're ready for our our new rotor. Just wipe your hands clean because the stuff is sticky. So this rotor came with. Uh, some kind of oil on it, eh? Yeah. Is this, uh... It's a coated rotor. They usually come with, with oil too to protect them from rusting and shipping or in, in storage. So when you have the rotor, the new rotor, you might get some, uh, you can see some oil spots and whatnot. And uh, this is just an OE replacement, but it does have some oil on it. So what we'll do is uh, we'll set it down, get a clean rag, any shop towel will do. Fold it in four, spray some brake cleaner on it, 
Just wipe it clean. Make sure there's no oil on it. Also make sure you clean the inside where the uh, where the e-brake meets the rotor. Do you clean all the rotors, or just it's just this type? Specific ones. Uh, usually, all all rotors come with a little film of, of oil on them, just so they they don't rust. But some of the coated rotors, they recommend not to use any crazy uh, brake cleaner on them because it takes the the coating off of it, and it might rust a lot quicker than usual. Defeats the purpose. Defeats the purpose. Correct. So the back side is now clean. So what I'll do is uh, we'll slide it on. I'll slide it onto the hub and then we'll clean the we'll clean the face of it afterwards because you got your hands on it already. So we'll do the same thing to the front. So we put on the uh, the new rotor, uh, cleaned it up, and uh, don't forget to uh, take out the uh, the rubber garment that's. Uh, that's serving as a, I guess, a window on the on the rotor. So there's a uh, small hole where you can uh, put a flathead screwdriver and just pretty much pop it out. And um, if you can just like place that back in there. So it's kind of stubborn, but it goes in eventually. So you basically just line it up and you press it in until it goes in. It is now time to uh, put the uh, the pads in the in the caliper. So we have to press the uh, the piston back in its place. Um, Usually it's best to use a, a C-clamp, but we don't seem to find one handy. So we're uh, going to uh, do it with the, um, the channel lock. Okay, it works just, uh, just as good. So um, have the, uh, I guess, clamp set somewhere. Uh, I guess that's not putting any pressure on the, uh, the brake line, right? And pretty much just uh, press, the, uh, press the piston back in its place, right? So I'll hold it, and uh, Ish, if you can just demonstrate how it essentially would work. So ideally, we, we don't want to put any dings or the, anything like that on the piston itself. So we we would use an, the old brake pad just as a backup, and then it will go in uh, and, it, and it will push the piston in evenly from all all around. So basically, we find a nice groove or find a nice spot uh, on on the on the housing there, and then just just press onto it like that until until the piston seats where it's supposed to be. So pretty much flush. On the on the caliper, mm -hmm. right? So what what ends up happening usually is is as the, as the brake pads wear down and there's no uh, there's no brake pad material on it, the piston closes on the on the on the rotor and from the lack of material, the piston gets stuck outwards from the because of the size of the of the rotor decreasing. And then what you have to do is basically press it back in because your new pads and rotors are a lot thicker and a lot bigger and it will just make it easier for you to get it onto the new new rotors and pads. So that's that. And uh, just a quick note, I'm going to say that uh, we didn't it wasn't easy for us to put back the uh, the piston, so uh, definitely make sure to um, have a C-clamp, uh, a channel lock and uh, you know, pretty much have those handy so if you need to uh, need to do it so you can finish your project. So next we're going to we're going to service our our uh, our brake pad housing. We're gonna take out the old, old slider uh, slider shims and put on the new ones. Also grease up our our uh, slider pins and all the boots, and then uh, reinstall everything together. So uh, we were lucky enough to get um, our uh, new slider shims, but if you don't have a new slider shim, you can uh, easily reuse the uh, the old one. So um, with a wire brush, uh, you can just pretty much uh, clean off the um, the access rust and and uh, whatever uh, brake dust that's left over with pretty much a couple of a uh, couple of brushes like this. You can you can reuse uh, your old one. But again, uh, we have our new ones, so we're gonna put on the new ones and uh, put some. Uh, I put some. Of, what are you gonna put, put on there? Uh, anti seize. Anti seize on there. Okay, so that's Just that so prevents again uh, for removing it next time. Okay, that's also that's good. That's right. So a good practice is to get your old, your new ones, and then just just retighten them a little bit, just so it sits in there nice and snug. It sits in the uh, the bracket there. So what we'll do is we'll do that to both of them. Just be careful; they're really sharp. You might wanna wear some gloves. So. Just note how they came out from the old ones, and then you'll be able to easily put them in the right way. So as you can see, the new ones go in just like that. 
So we'll get some NTCs as our last sum. And uh, we'll put some where the uh, the pads meet the, the caliper. How's it? Snap some there. Again, it's a bit time consuming, but it's definitely it's a worth good it. step to take. Once you have a, a good amount on there, just rub it in with your fingers. Just to like, have a spread. Yeah, just leave a spread. So now uh, we're going to be uh, greasing up the the pins. Is that correct? Yeah. I guess so. You would, are you going to take off the old ones? You and basically, pop the boot off the off the old one, and you just get a nice clean rag, a very cleaner, or even an old rag will do, just to clean off the old old grease. You gotta remember, this is an eight-year-old brake setup with old grease and old rust and crap in there. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll get some new grease, just with your finger, just rub it on, get some in the boot, just rub it on there. That's one of them. Then we'll get it back into the To the caliper housing, or the, uh, and you can see how nicely it slides in there. And this will stop your, uh, this will help your rotors, uh, I mean your your caliper not to seize up in the future, and it will slide in and out a lot easier. So we'll do the same thing to the to the piston side. A little bit of grease on there. Yeah, so should, we should be careful not to uh, get that on the on the pads, right? That's right. That's right. And so the uh, the brake uh, brake pad uh, bracket is all set with the uh, anti seized uh, shims as well as the pins are all greased up and ready to go. So there are a few ways of doing this, but uh, we found it easier to uh, install uh, the um, the brake pad uh, bracket first and then put the um, piston. put the yeah. So so the, the brake pads and then the pistons, right? Right. So you're gonna show us how to uh, how to get that done. So what we're gonna do right now is basically. Just get our old bolts nice and clean. We've already done that, and uh, we'll get some red Loctite because that's how it comes from the factory. And just uh, you can see the old, where the old Loctite stops, and that's where the thread stops. So what we do is we could put just just a little line over the threads, and that will seep into the all the uh, all the threads once you start threading it in, like that. Just a little bit, and then what we'll do is uh, we'll put this bracket in place. We'll start tightening up by hand. And we'll do the same thing with the lower bolt. And this prevents any movement of the bolt. In this well, prevents the yeah. This, this this basically prevents the bolt from walking out on you under whatever reason you might do that. It, mm -hmm. it comes like that in fa from the factory, so we're just we're doing the same thing. So we'll tighten these up by uh, we'll snug them up. Then once we're done with everything, we'll just torque them down to 80 foot pounds. 80 foot pounds. That's a good note. The brake pad uh, bracket is uh, nice and snug now, and it's time to put the um, the brake pads on it. So uh, if uh, you misplace um, which pad goes where, essentially the uh, the lineup of it, you can go back to the old pads and look at the uh, the wear on the back of it. So there's a caliper wear on uh, on this one here, and we have a um, piston wear, a circle uh, on the uh, on this one. So you'll see that the one with the pin would I guess um, go to uh, go to the back where the uh, the piston is, yep. correct? Yep. Okay. And the other pad will go to uh, to the front. Okay. Okay.
Now we're ready to slide the uh, the pistons out of the uh, the caliper onto the onto the bracket. So as you can see, we already lubed up the the other pin. So we'll basically, simply line it up here into the uh, onto the new. Oh, it goes on like that. Just turn it around. Make sure the loop goes everywhere. And the boot just goes right on it. Eh? The boot just, just slides it. right over where it's supposed to be. Then we'll just slide the, the new caliper right over it. And now it's time to uh, put the uh, 12 millimeter bolt that we removed from the back of the lower slider pin to go back in. So what we'll have to do is basically put a little bit more Loctite at the bottom of this because of the way it locks from the factory. And then uh, we'll just put it in. Hand tighten it for now. Now what we'll have to do is the slider pin. It is it's a slider pin, so it 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 will turn on its own. So what we all you have to do is there's a uh, there's an 18 mil uh, a socket hex uh, stopper here that you have to hold in place with a wrench. Yeah. With a wrench, and then you just tighten the uh, the 12. The 12 millimeter bolt that we just put in with the, with the socket. I think it's like that. But simple tightening with a hand would uh, would be sufficient for that. Yeah, I believe the, the factory uh, recommends a torque number, but usually when you have Loctite on something, snug is more than enough. Plus, it's not gonna slide out anywhere. Okay. There you go. You can also oh, uh, the, uh, still have to put back the uh, the brake line hose bracket. So it's basically a cammed a cammed bracket. So all you do is you turn it until it, it accept the, the bracket on the suspension part accepts it. Just slide it in and it turns back into its spot. Then you have your brake line nice and tight where it's supposed to be. All right, That's there it. you have it. New rotors new pads and we did all the maintenance so uh, it'll serve us good for uh, for years to come all right brake job all done uh, check out my buddy ish at the irie red drum e for more interesting videos such as burnouts uh, track track days on the uh, 2009 pontiac g8 gt like and subscribe for more videos and uh, add comments below with questions or suggestions cheers